cute little deer. I think it, oh, it's made out of barbed wire. Huh. And Riverside Park, Douglas, Wyoming. Welcome hunters, which would be why there's a meat rack, I guess. It's a cupcake over there. Steve over there. Picnic tables. It's just really pretty here. It's a two night stay. Maximum. Maximum. But it's free to stay here. We found it on, on iOverlander. When we're boondocking, like in the middle of nowhere, like just us in like the wilderness, we don't typically cover up our, our back windows uh, on the camper. But we're, when we're kind of like city boondocking like this, we, we kind of seal up tight. We were staying somewhere, I, I don't know where, and uh, I realized that someone was uh, looking through our back window like early in the morning. So since then, I've been a little better about uh, putting the covers on uh, if we're in the city where somebody could like wander up and take a look at us. So not too exciting, but just part of the reality of boondocking where there are a lot of other people around. So today we went to Target. Well, first we went to Lowe's and Home Depot and then we went to Target. And at Target, we got these hanging closet organizers. So they are 27 inches high by 14 and a quarter inches wide and 14 inches deep. So we opened one of them while we were in the Target parking lot and we made sure it would fit in this cupboard and in our cab over cupboards. We each have one back here. So it does fit. So I'd like to show you this cupboard to show you why we need better organization. This cupboard, oh, nothing fell. <laughs> Usually we open it and stuff falls out. It doesn't always look quite this bad, but it is basically what it looks like. Um, all these are seaweed treats. Um, we generally keep, oh, my knee can't do that. <laughs> we generally keep like extra coffee pods, chips that really have just smashed to bits extra pasta and then we keep um plates and bowls and stuff in here i put a command hook up there and hang a little um bag from it to try to give me a little bit of vertical storage but it's you know it's not helpful so today we got those tote things from target and i'm excited to try them out here is what is left in this cupboard um, it's not to show you what we have because I know it doesn't really matter what we have. It's just to show you space-wise what will fit. Down here is just a tote with hiking food and then some more backpacking food. And of course, the big bottle of vodka from Costco. Oh, wait, so, let me share about, uh, we were in Pendleton, Oregon a few weeks ago. And uh, what was the name of the distillery we went to? Great, great grains. It probably it. says it on there. Anyway, we went to some distillery and Oregon we, Grain Growers Distillery. Yeah, and I got this uh, horseradish flavored vodka. You wouldn't think it, but I found I really, really like it. So Steve's not really a vodka drinker. Not a vodka, but I found a nice a shot of this all by itself, or a couple shots of this in the Bloody Mary is just takes the edge right off the mornings. Anyways, we All were right. talking about storage. So, <laughs> so there's, here's our cupboard empty. Anyways, we got a little distracted by horseradish vodka, so. That's good. You can really taste the horseradish. I like it a lot. Cheers, F and T. My turn. No, so we're using the same cup because <laughs> we didn't feel like washing too. Anyway, so cheers, F and T. Let's see if your head does the little shake. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Just a nice, it's more than a hint of horseradish, but it's not overpowering. Anyway, that ends our commercial. <laughs> Unpaid for commercial. Yeah. Okay, here it is. Hanging closet organizer. 
made by design at Target, $10. So $30 for three cupboards. Um, we don't get anything from Target for saying that. <laughs> Just that we found something that works for us and wanted to share it with you. But if Target would like to <laughs> throw some compensation our way. Yeah, that, that's probably not going to happen. Okay. So it comes with extra hooks in case you wanted to hang something on the outside of it. We don't really have room to do that. This is just the right size. Whoops. Um, my vodka is in the way. So it is just the right size for this cabinet when we have the extra leaf, um, countertop leaf in there. This turned out to be just the right size. We may end up having to move this box. I'm not sure yet. So here's our cupboard. Um, we actually have, this tote wasn't in here before. What's in that tote? Soup stuff, like miso soup stuff. Like most of what's in here is ramen and soup and vodka. So. <laughs> well, no, I so. think everybody get starting to get an idea of how we travel going down the road. <laughs> vodka. Um, vodka and ramen. And ramen. Ramen mm -hmm. or vodka at night. Yep. And ramen at lunch. Miso soup, all kinds of stuff. Um, right now we ran out of paper plates today. So we do have regular plates, but mostly we use paper because it's easy and it's not great for the environment but neither is driving a diesel so so there's that <laughs> so i'll just be fatalistic <laughs> it was driving a diesel <laughs> with hybrid stickers on it anyway i'm pleased with how this is i don't know why we didn't do it before um but i'm glad we did it now so this is my little uh closet uh so to say, uh, until, you know, just a few weeks ago, what I was keeping in here was my backpack, uh, a sleeping bag, a sleeping tent, and assorted like hiking paraphernalia. Uh, all my hiking stuff is gone now for the season, so I have empty space. So what I'm keeping in here now is <laughs> noodles. Ramen, more ramen. Ramen. The story behind the ramen uh, is that we've, we found this one noodle that I, I really, really like and we've only found it for sale like one place in the country uh, everywhere we've been traveling so whenever we go through it's actually it's a little uh store in asian colorado pacific. spring asian, asian pacific but not again not that we're looking for any kind of sponsorship <laughs> or any kind of opportunity like that but anyway really like these noodles uh can only find them in one place so when we go through town we buy a bunch of them i did find these noodles and not that you really care at all i did find these noodles for sale one place on the web but unfortunately i had to buy a pallet <laughs> so it was really hard to hard to be able to justify Our entire back seat would be yeah. filled with ramen and it wasn't so much the ramen it was just the knowledge that if i bought like whatever it was 460 <laughs> Packets. packets of ramen that I might have to give up the telescope. Oh. So, oh, oh, oh. so, all right. So, got a bag in here, uh, and then I've got uh, a little tiny, like a day pack that I keep in here for like day hikes, and then my book collection at the bottom. And honestly, one of the, the challenges with this little closet has been like organized storage. I have a lot of books that I, I'd like to read that I brought along on this journey to read, but they've just ended up buried down here at the bottom. So we're going to put in one of these little storage racks and we'll see if that makes any difference for my organization. After a lot of sorting, we ended up with like three different shelves, I guess four different shelves here full of books and then noodles stuffed in on the side. Uh, this is better than how it was, everything piled down. I'm not sure this is going to be my final configuration over here. Really what I need to do is get busy and start reading books so I can get rid of them. That was the whole idea of paperbacks. You read them and then toss them. Some of these we picked up at small bookstores through like small towns we've gone through. We try to support the local places. So definitely we'll read them and then they'll hit the dirt. But I really like the efficient use of space in here.
may not be how you would use it, but since I like <laughs> to read, it's how I'm gonna use it for the moment. Here is my side of the bed. It's generally not this messy, but it stays messy. Like Steve, I have a lot of books. I keep a lot of books um, and places to visit, um, socks, uh, pamphlets, or booklets for tourist stuff. So I'm hoping that by organizing this closet, I'll have better organization for out here too. So like Steve, my backpack was in here. Um, now it's like a rain jacket, my kind of ramen that I only get in Colorado Springs. Um, and just miscellaneous stuff. I see some books down in there. I, so I'm hoping that by having that, what do you call it? Closet organizer in my cubby, it will clean up all of this. It's a lot better over here. One thing I found is a box from Costco of lentils. It was shoved back in there and I found two boxes of um, frosted mini wheat, which we completely forgot about. So <laughs> I'm glad for this extra storage, um, better use of storage. I cleared out my side stuff as I was hoping to do. So now it's just stuff I use every day. Uh, the paperback book I'm reading, the Kindle I'm reading, and my travel book. So even a place for my knitting. I've just recently retaken up knitting. So that's nice to have everything put away. Well, it's been a week, roughly, since we did the reorganization of our closet here, of my closet. So let's crack it open and see how it's done. Oh, well. Empty. I guess the reality is that looks like all of my books dumped out. So my book configuration here didn't work. So I think what I'll try next is I'll put my books down here and I'll move my clothes from here up to here. We'll see if that will keep everything from falling out. I think just because the books are slick and the truck, you know, we go forward and back, that kind of thing. I think it just, os the oscillation just rotated all the books right out. So we'll try it again. Take two. Oh, hi, friend. I was just sitting up straight in my bed here. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't really work. Somebody was asking recently, uh, can I sit up in bed? And I hadn't really thought about it, but I guess that if I want to sit up straight, the answer is no, I can't. So I'm six foot three. Uh, but generally I don't sit like this because it's really not comfortable. Uh, so anyway, so I did some reorganizing here. First, let's look at the window before we talk about reorganizing. So this is our brand new window we just had installed. This was done under the warranty. Uh, so there we go. Works nice and pretty. Uh, problem we were having before with the with the windows, three of the windows, is that the uh, the seal had broken, like the weatherproof seal between the outer pane and the inner pane. That's part of like the the double pane is part of uh, like the upgrade package that we got. So this window was defective, and then the two windows over the uh, kitchen table were defective. So we just had this in, and they did some warranty work. And it's nice, you know, it's colder outside now, so. Uh, previously, when it got cold outside and it was warm inside, this would just fog up. Kind of, and not even a nice fog either. I mean, if it would have been like uniform across the whole thing, you'd be like, oh, okay, I can live with that. But it's kind of like patchy. And... So anyway, got a new window. We'll see how long it lasts. Back to this. So I took all of my books that I had up here and I've moved them down here now. So for those of you that are eagle-eyed, you could freeze the frame right now. And you can read all the titles of the books that I have really uh, not that exciting. So I stashed the books in the middle here and my noodles at the two ends. Really, I think my goal should be to read a lot of these books and then just jettison them or give them back to whoever gave them to me before some of you have heart palpitations. I'm going to give away your books. So books are here. I moved my clothes up here. So I'm not sure how well this is going to work. Noelle's shaking her head no behind the camera. 
So my experience last year with this uh, was that when we were driving outside and it was very, very cold, we started to have condensation issues inside these two cabinets. It was, you put your hand on the wall and we would actually have moisture. So I'm not sure from a clothing standpoint if this is a great place for us to hang things. Kind of the bottom, I thought, okay, I'm going to put all the stuff down here that I generally don't wear every day. Socks, underwear, t-shirts. I have so many t-shirts, it's crazy. But actually, truthfully, we when we went home to Portland, I was I thought it was like, oh, I need to buy a couple more t-shirts. My, my t-shirts are getting worn. Then we're in Portland, I just went shopping in our own storage shed and I got more t-shirts out. So really what I need to do is get rid of some t-shirts and then stuff on top here that I might be wearing right now, seasonal. Got still some shorts because I'm hanging on to summer. A uh, pair of like workout pants because at some point I'll start working out again, but not today. So this is act two. We'll see how this works over time and we'll keep you posted. So um, Steve showed you in his cupboard and it didn't work. Mine didn't work either. So I've taken everything out. <laughs> well, you cleaned yours out before we're filming. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, no, I cleaned it out yesterday because I was trying to try different things. This sheet is the only thing that lasted. But here's what I think it is. Because this goes back further, I think that it's just rocking like this as we're traveling. So then everything's going to fall. So I'm going to try using its Scotch brand heavy duty Velcro. So I am going to try putting it, it's sticky backed. So I'm gonna try putting it on both sides and stick it to the wall and see if that might help. But who knows? I have my Velcro cut out. I'm using a pretty big strip of it. Might be overkill, but I just want to try it. So I think I'm going to put it down further for a little bit better anchorage here. So I'm just sticking it to the back of the canvas. Now I'm going to stick it to the back. I don't know if you can see that. I just stuck it back here and press it down pretty hard. I'll do that on the other side too and then load it and then um, see how it does after we drive again. I loaded my cupboard back up. I um, put the Velcro at the top on both sides, on the bottom on both sides. It could be double side sticky tape. We just already owned that Velcro so I used it. And the other thing I did was cut some strips of that um, rubber matting. It goes like underneath your rug and put it under stuff that might slide. So see how easy that slid out. And then with that, it doesn't really slide. So I put it up here under my books too. It'll catch the first book. <laughs> the top ones will probably still slide, but, um, and I got rid of some stuff. So um, not as much in here as was in here before. We'll see how it does. So our work from last week, uh, actually this was the cabinet that I would say was successful. So this is what it looks like. We haven't done any cleanup after about a week. So we've been taking things in and out of here. Uh, I think the vodka bottle, yeah, got moved over down here. This is a little cumbersome to me, like the all of these guys, but we're taking things in and out of here uh, every day. So I think like with anything, it's, it's the big quantities, like the Costco size boxes that give us challenges. So. But it's just so cheap. I know. That, that's always... <laughs> and stuff we eat regularly. So. Yeah. So anyway, for, for this particular cabinet, we don't need to do any kind of side supports. Uh, it's kind of flush in the back, so we're not having a problem with it swinging forward and backward. Uh, so I'd say this cabinet is a success. I would do this exactly the same again. So one of the repairs we talked to you about was the crack that we're getting uh, right here by our sink. So when we talked to him at the 
the RV place, their feedback was they could replace like this entire bathroom. It's all one piece. Or they could put some epoxy on it. We said we didn't care about the epoxy, you know, as long as the crack doesn't continue to spread, uh, then it doesn't really matter to us. So at the moment, we've gone with the epoxy route, and if this grows, though, over time, then we'll have to take it in, and they would have to replace the whole kit and caboodle. It's a little more challenging for us, but the idea of let's replace the whole thing, uh, we live in here. So the idea of turning it into them for what could be a multi-day job means we have to pay to stay in a hotel. So we're not anxious to do that. So we are anxious to find solutions that work for both of us uh, that keep as much money as possible in our pockets. This week we were lucky enough to visit a PCT hiker who we met in 2019. It was great to get a guided tour of the town of Sheridan, Wyoming with David and Sherilyn. David's a well-known chainsaw carving artist in town, so it was really special to listen to him share about his passion of chainsaw carving. Meeting up with folks like David and Sherilyn is one of the main reasons we travel. So thanks for allowing us to park Cupcake at your house for a night, and we hope to see you again soon.